Hello everyone and welcome. If you are a fan of the letter N, then you're probably going to be an enthusiast of this. I'm sorry I did that. We are sitting inside of the Hyundai Ioniq 5N and this is Hyundai's launch into the world of performance EVs. So this is what they believe a performance EV should be. And as a result, it has a lot of really cool features and a lot of customization that you're able to do. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at 10 features, all of which start with the letter N and how they're allowing for so much customization in the world of electric cars. Now, you can hear as I tap the paddle shifter, yes, in an electric car which only has a single gear reduction, uh, it downshift, right? And I can feel the torque as I upshift going back into my seat. And so this is called NE shift. And I know this is gonna be the most controversial one, and so that's what we're launching right into. And the whole idea is kind of, they wanted to think, okay, there are electric cars out there that are fast, but the engagement is reduced. How can we increase the engagement in an electric vehicle? And this is one of those methods. And when you're a kid, you take a little card and you stick it in your bicycle wheel spokes and it makes that loud noise and it makes your bike experience more engaging. And so this is like just kind of doing that. It, it's creating a way to be involved but, you know, not in a, okay, we threw it in there and, and now it works and it makes these sounds and it, and it has gears. It is extremely well thought out and it is meant to behave just like an eight-speed dual clutch transmission that it's replicating. And so you actually do have a rev limiter, for example, you'll have fuel cut off as you get to the top of that gear. <laughs> you have uh, torque, so when you upshift, you lose torque from the electric motor and then it slams you with torque really quickly so you feel that shift and it does actually feel like a real shift. You have a rev limiter of 6,750 RPM unless you're in end mode in which you can increase that another 1,000 RPM. So while the electric motor revs all the way to 21,000 RPM, you are replicating an engine here that revs, you know, about 6,800 RPM, much like a Hyundai N vehicle would rev to if it had a combustion engine. And so you're adding in these features that people love about combustion cars with the sound, so that is called an active sound, feature number two, and that is adding in the noises, and it's completely dependent on, you know, what speed are you at, where's your throttle position, uh, what gear are you in, all of these things are changing. And with each of those gear shifts, you do have less torque. So if I put it in sixth, you can hear it lugging as I'm trying to crawl up a hill, but it doesn't have the RPM to do it. I'll go even lower, and now we're in eighth, trying to crawl up this hill, and you can hear it blah, 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 burbling along, trying to accelerate. Versus if I go down into a lower gear, it gives me access to more of that electric motor's torque so I can actually accelerate. So it really is duplicating exactly how an engine would feel, even in ways if it hinders you, right? Like you shouldn't be in a high gear and trying to accelerate, but it's saying, well, you chose that, so that's what you get. If you downshift at the wrong time in a corner, you know, it'll, it'll kind of slide out the vehicle a little bit, punishing you for doing it at the wrong time. So it really just acts like an automatic transmission with a ton of thought, a ton of programming, so much effort has gone into it. It's not just, you know, a card in the spokes. So much effort has gone into it, and so it is actually kind of fun to play around with. I mean, it's like if you're a kid and you like being, you know, silly, playful, fun, uh, but now you're an adult, so you can't like that. It has to be real, right? It's like they did so much effort into the program that it feels very real. Okay, so let's take an e-shift out onto the track and see how it feels. <laughs> so now we are going to try out an e-shift on the track and as you can hear if you let out on a downshift didn't do it there there's a little crackle from the exhaust there's a speaker up front and a speaker in the back there you go there's that exhaust crackle I mean, it's coming from behind you, so... I wouldn't say it sounds completely like a combustion engine. I mean, there's an artificial nature to it, but it is based off of Hyundai and, you know, engine sounds, real engines. And so it's close. And I think if you weren't like a diehard enthusiast, you could be convinced that this had an engine. 
Now, as far as feature number two, that N Active Sound Plus, there are three different modes. So you have the combustion engine, which you can hear there. If you know combustion engines, it doesn't sound purely like a combustion engine. If you didn't, perhaps you could be convinced. You can even have it in part and have it in neutral and just rev the engine, you know, rev the engine. You're just making the sound. Uh, so it is kind of interesting. You've got that combustion mode. They also have evolution mode where they are taking sounds directly from electric motors, from an electric powertrain, and then amplifying them and creating this, what, you know, they believe like the future of performance EVs will sound like. So it is taking real noises, not from this car. It's, it's then put in through the speakers and then you, you get this sound of, you know, the evolution of the car. So then we have supersonic. Kind of sounds like maybe an airplane going by. Okay. Enough of that, we're moving on to number three, N battery preconditioning. So this is a really useful thing if you're gonna go out on a racetrack. So there are both drag mode and track mode. Drag mode, you're targeting a temperature of about 30 to 40 degrees C. For that battery, it's gonna use the HVAC system of the vehicle, cooling system of the vehicle, and try and get the battery between 30 and 40 degrees C. That's ideal for maximum power deployment. So you don't get it for a really long time, but you get maximum power. Now, still on end battery preconditioning, we have track mode, which this is trying to lower that temperature even further so that you can have long sessions out there on the track so it's targeting about 20 to 30 degrees Celsius and trying to ensure that when you go out there you can maximize your time on the track okay so from N battery preconditioning we go out onto the racetrack and now we're using number four and race mode and here once again we have two different choices we can choose between sprint and endurance so if we are in sprint we're going for maximum power this has an 84 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, about three to five percent of that reserve so not usable and then you also have 600 horsepower so at any point put your foot down in sprint mode you have access to that full 600 horsepower now maybe you only get you know a, a 20 minute lap session with that end sprint mode where you have maximum power and then you go charge and you come back and perhaps do it again. Now within end race mode, if you switch over to endurance mode, well, you're now limited in power. You don't have as much, but the whole idea is you're not using as much energy. You can spend more time out there and you won't have to worry about thermal derate on your battery because you're gonna be keeping things at lower power levels. But really the whole idea there is you're extending how much time you can spend out on the track. Okay, let's get off the track and move on to number five, and pedal, which actually you could use on the track. So one of the cool benefits of electric cars is that you can have one pedal driving. So end pedal is taking that a further step because with one pedal driving, if you're driving around passengers, you don't want to let off the throttle and then suddenly it slams you with all of that braking torque from the motor's regen. So you have a separate mode for when you're driving, you know, perhaps with some friends, you just want to be comfortable. As you let off the throttle pedal, it eases into the braking, the regenerative braking, and it's not that high of a regen setting. With end pedal, you know, say you're spirited driving and you want to have some of that load transfer to the front of the wheels as you turn in, or you're driving on a track and you want to have that load transfer occur to the front so that when you turn in, it's very quick. You don't want that long delay of when you let off the throttle and when you start to get regen. You want it immediately. So end pedal allows you to adjust how much of that regen you want. So if you're just on the first setting, one, just 0.2 Gs, Second setting, 0.29. Third setting, 0.36 Gs. So a lot of regenerative braking just by letting off. As you can see, it's quite an aggressive slowdown. Then, in addition to this, they increase the amount of regen that the brake pedal is doing. So with your brake pedal, as you get onto that, you can have up to 0.6 Gs of regen, which I believe is the highest of any electric vehicle out there. So as you get really hard onto that brake pedal, up to 0.6 Gs, you are still using regen. So it's not using a lot of the mechanical brakes. And part of it is if you have more cooling, and they do, they have upgraded the cooling of this versus the Ionic 5. They have a completely different cooling strategy up front, more airflow, different radiator strategy. It's designed to handle more heat, which of course, if you have regen and more power like this does, then you have to deal with that. Another thing they do is that even if you get into ABS, they are still using 0.2 Gs of regenerative braking to slow you down, even at full max, you know, whatever it is, 1.2 Gs that you're slowing down at with full ABS on, they're still using that regen. And then once you 
dip below out of that ABS region, then it goes again back up to as high as 0.6 Gs with up to 320 kilowatts of power that they're able to send into that battery pack using the regen. The real cool benefit of NPEDAL to me is just that you have that responsiveness. It's a really responsive one pedal driving map rather than the comfort mode where you know you're coming up to a stoplight, you don't need to like crush on the brakes just so you can come up with a stoplight. You want a smooth transition into the region. This is a much sharper response into it. And each level one, two, and three increases the ramp that you get into that high region. Now, number six is a really cool feature, N torque distribution. And so so you can actually select, this has a motor up front, it has a motor in the rear, and you can choose the bias that you want to have and how much torque you want going to the rear, how much torque you want going to the front. 100, zero, zero, 100, you can do. Now, if you get all the way on the throttle and you ask for maximum power, it's going to actually use both motors to ensure that you can get maximum power. But up to a certain point, you have it so that it biases one side, whether that's the front or the rear. So if you're out on the track and you want a little bit more bias on the rear, you can have that 70-30 split and it sends more torque to the rear as a ratio versus the front so that you have that more lively characteristic feel associated with, you know, a rear wheel drive vehicle. Now, of course, if you're thinking about all of that torque going to the rear, your mind might be going towards drifting, which brings us to number seven, and drift optimizer. So this is basically the cheat code to help anyone be able to drift, and they're using all the stability controls and trying to help you pick that slip angle and then stay at it and drift around. And it even has something called end torque kick, which is essentially like a clutch kick, where when you hold both paddles, then release the paddles, what it does is it allows allows for some weight transfer to the front, so you take off the weight, the load on those rear wheels, and then it immediately slams them with torque so that it kicks out the rear, much like you would while clutch kicking. So they've really thought about, you know, how do we make this uh, much like the manual car experience as far as initiating a drift, they have built that into this end drift optimizer. Number eight is N Grin Boost. And so I mentioned the car has 600 horsepower, but there's this little button on the steering wheel, NG Beast, and for N Grin Boost, and if you push it, <laughs> you get an, <laughs> you smile. That's what it makes you do. It makes you smile. You get an additional 40 horsepower. Uh, and so you also, it seems to have a bit more ramp up in that acceleration. So when you put your foot down in N Grin Boost mode, it is very immediate the response of that throttle pedal and it is very fast 640 horsepower most of that coming from the rear motor but what a fun mode to drive in so end grin boost lasts for 10 seconds then you have to wait 10 seconds in order to get it back and we've got it back we can get back on it so just a way, you know, perhaps out on the track, a little push to pass or have a little bit more power if you're coming out of a corner and you've got a long straight ahead of you, press that end grin boost and get a little bit extra power. Number nine is end launch control. <laughs> yes, so there's different levels of grip you can set the car for whether that is low, medium, or high, and it will target higher level of slips as you have more grip in order to give you the maximum possible launch, as we just saw there. Yeah, quite good acceleration from this thing, zero to 60 in the low threes. And finally, number 10 is N Road Sense. And apparently, I guess this camera is looking for one of those squiggly line signs that says, hey, the road up ahead is really curvy, and it automatically puts it into N mode because it's like, yo, you're about to have some fun. Over Overall, this is a really difficult vehicle to get a good summary of in a short amount of time. Like just driving this vehicle in one day is not enough time to fully understand it because there are so many features that are accessible to the driver. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about it because people will have different styles of what they think is cool, right? If you don't think exhaust sound inside of an electric vehicle is cool, you can turn it off. If you do, you can turn it on. If you don't like regen, you can have it so it coasts when you let off the throttle pedal. If you want a lot of regen, you can have it do that. You have all these different levers that you can rely on or pull away from, disable, enable, and you have so much choice as a driver to what you want the vehicle to feel like. And that is really wild and really cool because usually the manufacturer says, we know this is the best setting. That's the setting you get 
off you go. Or they throw in a little sport mode and not really much changes. There is so much customization that is possible with this thing as far as the driving modes. And you have different settings here so you can select and create your own and just easily switch between them really quickly. So it's really cool how much they are trying to say, you know what, enthusiasts can get into this world of electric cars and have a good time, and we're gonna give you all the tools you need to make the vehicle exactly what you want it to be. I appreciate that. I need more time with this thing to fully understand it, but overall, I have really enjoyed it. It's fun to drive, it's fun to drive on these roads, it's fun to drive on the track. It does show the weight. Yes, it's a very heavy vehicle. It's a little over 4,600 pounds. So on the track, you know, you feel that heft, but they're putting in features to try and mask that weight, like that end pedal driving, where you have more of that load transfer to the front as you let off the throttle very quickly and help with turn in. So there's different things that they're playing with. The torque slider, so you, you can have the rear kind of kick out and get silly. That's really cool. I love all the features they have packed into this and that it's all optional right the driver chooses what do they want it to be overall i've had a great time driving this thing if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below thanks for watching i keep being in the wrong gear and then i can't keep up because you're actually limited in torque as you're in a higher gear and at the wrong time the other thing is they asked me if I was comfortable driving on this track, and I said yes, because I've driven on it before, but that means they put me with all the best drivers, and it's like, well, if you're with the best drivers, and they're not trying to film, and you are trying to film, yeah, doing both at the same time is never something that's come natural to me, so here we are giving it our best.